How do y'all be delicious people? I am here today to review Thor Ragnarok. Really, uh, I have yet to even actually watch and review Thor and Thor The Dark World. So we're kind of doing this out of order because I just so happened to watch this movie. I'm like, hey, I'm just going to sit down and just watch this film considering like someone else was watching it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch it and I'm going to finally review it on the channel. Where eventually this will be eventually put out, don't know, and it doesn't really matter to me. It just matters that eventually I finally review it and cover it. Going into Thor Ragnarok, uh, I really do thoroughly enjoy this movie. Some people might actually hate this film. Some people might just like that it's just a space adventure and it feels drastically different from the other two films. We end up having also this movie not actually having Loki be a villain in this movie, which I can actually enjoy. Because <laughs> it's like, good God, how many movies have has Loki been a villain in some either Avengers film or Thor film of sorts? And it kind of gets like tiring. It kind of gets to the point where like at least we get that like breather of not having to deal with Loki so often. To the point where eventually now, after what it all happened with, uh, with when we get to really end game, eventually Loki is now doing his own show. I think that's the main reason why I wanted to kind of start to get some Thor movies underway because knowing full well that we only have a certain amount of days to start to get some Thor stuff out of the way. So... Going into this film, I am going to try, in spoiler terms, to try and talk about settings. Uh, like, some people may not know that um, uh, Surtur, Surtur's setting was Muspelheim. Uh, really, uh, we kind of go into several different settings and locations in this movie. Like, Muspelheim, and uh, Sakaar, and Asgard... Norway, a bunch of other kinds of things, but we also go into a uh, familiar setting for a lot of people that have seen a certain film uh, or a certain uh, person that is from a certain film. Try, trying to uh, trying to skirt around and trying to have people remember that there are certain Marvel characters in this movie, which I actually really do. Uh, find interesting and fascinating and I just uh was I'm, I'm just like I really enjoy this movie for its real MCU thing adding in here I think also it's kind of good that we end up having really uh even certain character stories being placed into this movie rather it just be Thor carrying this whole entire thing we end up having some fascinating other Marvel character stories that are be plopped into here. And I'm like, yeah, like this actually works perfectly for Thor to do this kind of story. And it'll be interesting to see eventually where Love and Thunder goes after this whole situation, especially with Endgame and everything like that. Where is Love and Thunder eventually going to head into? Which is kind of obvious because... If we've ever heard so many trailers and, and so many sneak peeks and whatever. Going into this film, the thing that I thoroughly enjoy about this film is we end up having Loki, who is not the real main villain in this movie. We end up having him take uh, his part aside and we end up having finally a new villain in this film. Uh, which I do really enjoy. I know the Dark World does have like another kind of villain in that film. And, but to me, I'm like, man, they used like Loki so often in all the other films. It's kind of nice for this film to have Loki just kind of take a back seat to other things, which I do really like. Going into this film, uh, the thing that I enjoy about it is it's just, I think it really starts to hit its stride to realize that this should be an actually funny film. Like, we end up having so many of the early Marvel films that have to take itself way too seriously. 
the longer that we go about every one of these Marvel films, the more they start to realize that it's like, dude, we need to make people laugh in this film. We need to actually have scenes where, like, it just looks goofy. It looks fun. Like, we're having people that are just like, God, this is so, like, this is so silly. But that's the best thing about this, like, the the Thor franchise. Like, we really have it to where the first Thor movie, I think, takes itself way too seriously. But then eventually, once we get more sequels in, the more comedic the films are which that's what i like about this film compared to the early thor where everything is just so like uh is so serious and so emotional and so uh like you have to really invest in uh thor's character plus it's also kind of fun to play around with the people that they add in into this film like uh the whole play where we end up having uh loki being played by matt damon and thor being played by chris hemsworth's actual brother uh like that whole scene playing out i think is really fun really i can spoil bits and parts of this movie in all actuality because this movie has been out for a fairly long time <laughs> this movie has been if you don't know like via going into this film that there are certain things going on in this film for however long that it's been out spoilers sorry uh but yeah this movie to me is so funny and so fun and that's the thing i like about it uh that's the thing that i can probably like about this film compared to about the other thor films or just a lot of the early marvel stuff in general it's just a really fun film that of course just has a lot of good gags and that's the thing that i think i like about it most so with that said, I think it's about that time to go into that double tie, double five time territory because really we have it to a reasonably like this. Uh, the setting of this movie tends to jump around a lot, um, but there's a whole reason for that. We end up having to bring people back uh, with Thor to go and fight Hela, and so... It's kind of a very, like, it's a very interesting adventure story to have Thor really realize who he actually is uh, in this movie. I like the the journey of this character because we end up having Thor, who is just kind of struggling with who he is or who he thinks he is in this movie. We end up having it to where even Odin has to actually spell it out for him. Because we end up having Thor who relies heavily on Mjolnir and eventually like that has kind of just been, that has just always become his identity is uh, a, a, a hammer wielding uh, Viking. Like, so when eventually Thor has to forcibly in metaphorical terms, put the hammer down we now have to see who Thor really is without it and who he really and truly is to be called the God of Thunder for a reason. So with that said, I think it's about that coveted time to otherwise go into spoilers about this movie. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to try as much as possible to know every certain character and aspect and whatever that ends up going into this film. And man, is it going to be a lot of like uh, fascinating stuff that like, yeah, like I did way more research on this thing than I did probably uh, for any other review, but I hope I get every scene right. Or I hope I get every kind of spoiler thing. Cause I'm like, God, I'm so worried about this. Cause it kind of jumps around a lot and there's just a lot going on. So with that said, let's get on with this. Let's get into spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time to spoil this movie so we immediately have the very beginning of this film where we end up having thor who is imprisoned in muspelheim we end up having thor who is encaged in with a uh, guy that he is telling his whole life story to that basically uh everything that ended up happening from thor the dark world to basically up to this point we end up having Thor who ends up telling uh, this person of sorts that he ended up finding robots and all kinds of things. And so now it has led him to come to here, which was Muspelheim. 
And so Thor is ending up telling his whole entire life story to a skeleton who ends up bizarrely uh, uh, adjusting out his jaw and the jaw falls off. Uh, this is just a, uh, a skeleton of a man or a person that has been dead for seemingly a very long time. And it is what it is. So we end up having Thor who ends up getting dropped out of his cage uh, covered with chains to talk to Serta. So we end up having we end up having uh, Thor who is talking out with Serta to see what his grandmaster plan is or his next thing to do is. And we end up having Serta who is like, well, I'm finally going to f claim Asgard because G Asgard is uh, is defenseless and because neither Odin is in Asgard or or neither you, Thor, is in Asgard. And we end up having Thor going like, well, wait a minute, like, isn't, like, Odin's in Asgard? Like, no, like, you shouldn't be able to take down Asgard whatsoever. And, and Serta's like, Odin's not in, in Asgard. So we end up having Serta, who ends up making this big, grandiose scheme uh, that he is to go into the Eternal Flame and fulfill his prophecy of destroying Asgard and... We end up having Thor, who is to, like, mention that uh, this guy is to have a crown upon his head, and he thought that the crown was actually just big eyebrows, and, and sort of was like, no, like, it's a crown. Because <laughs> all that Thor has to do is evidently just de-crown uh, Serta to be able to... Uh, to be able to take Serta down, to be able to uh, not exactly kill him off, but to just incapacitate him to where the only thing that exists is just his crown. So we end up having it to where Thor is now to hear every little bit of Serta's plan, and we end up having a Thor who is to mention it's like, well... Like, uh, my grandmaster plan is to be able to get out of these chains and, uh, and take you down and take off, take off your crown and defeat you. And we end up having sort of saying, well, like, how, how exactly are you, are you going to be able to do that? And Thor's like, well, that's because that's what heroes do. <laughs> Bizarrely, we end up having that quote just kind of trickled throughout this movie i don't know why bizarrely like we have to have that quote bizarrely in this film i guess they were probably trying to make a meme out of it or something along those lines and maybe it didn't take it just seemed like a very old-fashioned way of saying things and i just thought it was a goofy quote so we immediately have it to where thor is to <clears throat> after consistently spinning around into this chain we end up having thor who is to to put his hand out to eventually wait for Mjolnir to come and we end up having Thor who's waiting a fairly long time because he's like and that's what heroes do and then he like throws up the hand from for Mjolnir to come but it's taking a long while and so we end up having Thor's like well like I guess I didn't time that quite right so we have it to where Mjolnir finally arrives into Thor's hand we end up having uh Thor, I guess, using Mjolnir to knock himself out, out of these chains. So we end up having Mjolnir, who ends up starting to fight some of Serta's men, just kind of blows through them. And then eventually he ends up kind of fighting Serta and ends up getting to a high position in this place to eventually take off Serta's crown. And so we end up having Thor, who ends up tossing the crown onto his back, uh, defeating Serta, and so we immediately have it to where all of a sudden a lot of Serta's minions are coming after Thor, to where Thor is like, Heimdall, <laughs> like, help me out. <laughs> like, I know, uh, I know, I normally don't uh, ask for a lot of quick, uh, uh, quick exits, but uh, Heimdall, little help. 
We, of course, end up having it to where Heimdall is not on his post. We end up having a guy named Serge or the Executioner who is to seemingly be, uh, be waiting uh, to eventually let someone in. Uh, we also had a moment where Thor had been consistently having uh, supposedly nightmares, and he had told Surtur about it, to where Thor had had nightmares while he was in uh, Muspelheim, where he was having these dreams about Asgard falling to ruins, and Surtur was some part of it. Uh, to where Surtur was like, well, yeah, like I'm going to go and fulfill my prophecy. So... When we end up having Thor, who ends up arriving back onto Asgard, we end up having it to where immediately that is what uh, Thor is going to look into of why he is so worried and so concerned. So we end up having Thor, who is consistently yelling out for someone to come for him while a giant monster is right behind him. So we end up having consistently Thor calling out, and so we end up having uh, Surge, who is going through his scavenger hunt of things that he had found. Uh, it seems that he ended up finding two machine guns, which he ends up calling Des and Troy, and then putting them together as Destroy. Uh, so we end up having the women who are starting to hear uh, somebody call for uh, a teleport and so we end up having surge who ends up going and saying like hey ladies like check this out so we end up having surge who ends up teleporting thor out of uh muspelheim and so now thor is in asgard but the funny thing is we end up having thor who also brings a head of a monster with him so we end up having a bunch of like green slime and all kinds of goop and stuff all hitting surge and uh the women of Asgard so we have a tour of course Thor is to say like well hey where is Heimdall and we have a tour of Surge is like well Heimdall is like off his uh, post and we end up having Thor who's like well who the heck are you and of course he ends up introducing himself as saying Surge like I fought with you once before it's like yeah I'm sure we, I'm sure he was in another movie I'm sure he was so we go on to have Thor, who is to, uh, who is to go into Asgard to see what the heck is going on, to see why Heimdall is gone. So we end up having it to where Thor is to go into the the city to realize that there is bizarrely a Thor uh, or a Loki statue, like a big, huge Loki statue. And he's like, why would there all of a sudden be a Loki statue? So we end up having it to where Thor is to eventually go and find his father, who is having a play being done for his son, reminding people of Loki giving up his life. And the scene of which that had happened in Thor the Dark World, to where we end up having Thor who is crying after Loki because Loki had died for Thor. And so we end up having Thor who is who is crying for Loki, and Loki is mentioning about uh, him like apologizing for all the goofy things that he has ever done, and Thor is... Uh, like, just saying, like, oh, no, those were all good jokes. Like, hey, they were really good things. And so we end up eventually having Loki eventually die off. And while, of course, before he dies, he ends up mentioning, it's like, I didn't do it for him. Like, and so we end up having Loki die. Thor is like, ah! <laughs> and so we immediately have... Uh, an alternate Odin, uh, the play Odin, go in and mention how Loki had, like, had died for everyone's sins kind of thing. And that, like, we should really appreciate uh, Loki for all that he's done and blah, 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 blah. You don't see any time where they're doing uh, Thor plays anytime soon. But anyways, so 
We end up having Thor making his presence known to where we end up having Odin, who's like, oh, sh-. And so we end up having Thor, who's like, hey, like, why is it that you guys are doing this play? And Odin mentions, like, well, the town wanted to put it together. And so we have it to where Thor's like, well, really? Did the town really want to put it together, Odin? Uh, and so we end up having Thor who mentions that he went to Muspelheim to, uh, take down Serta. And it seems that Serta had told him that it seems that there was no actual Odin here. And Thor is starting to realize that this Odin is someone different, that he wouldn't be just sitting around in his pajamas, uh, watching a play being put together. He wouldn't have that kind of time. So we end up having Thor who is starting to ask what exactly has Odin been doing while Thor has been away. And we end up having kind of Odin making up some excuses, some whatever, some like, oh, I was busy. Yeah, I was so busy. Yeah, keeping the nine realms together. Yeah, I'm sure you got a lot of stuff done. So we end up having it to where Thor is to basically just blatantly like say that like Odin like I know you're Loki like come on like and really like Odin is not like confessing it he's not admitting to it and so we end up having Thor who ends up just going and taking and propping Odin up to eventually put his hand right um right beside uh Odin's neck and so we end up having it to where Thor is to basically say, yeah, I'm going to have Mjolnir return back to me. And whatever is in its uh, its way of Mjolnir making to my hand will destroy it, will crush it, will whatever. And so, like, Loki, you need to tell me where my where our father is and and you need to tell me now. So... We end up having the hammer coming close to Loki, and so Loki ends up turning back to, of course, Loki. Now we end up having Thor, who ends up needing to desperately know where their father is. So we end up having, eventually, Loki, who is to eventually spill the beans, to eventually say that uh, Loki had stripped away all of uh, Odin's power and uh, eventually just sent him off to this building. So we end up having both Thor and Loki going to this building. I think it was some uh, place called uh, some kind of acres or something, or like some kind of probably possibly retirement home, where we are to end up finding out that this repair, uh, this retirement home had been, uh, had had some uh, construction being done on it. The whole entire building had been annihilated. And so we end up having uh, we end up having Loki who is to eventually all of a sudden have magic being done on him after Thor is to eventually take some pictures with some girls and they are to uh, mention to Thor it's like, well, it feels so bad that you and Jane broke up. To where we kind of have to confirm like where Jane and Thor's relationship is in this film. And so we end up eventually having Loki who is to go into this uh, this hole of sorts and he is to fall for 30 minutes. So <laughs> I've been falling for 30 minutes. <laughs> So Loki is in a place where he is falling for 30 minutes and we end up having uh, Thor who is teleported into the Sanctum Sanctorium to talk to Doctor Strange. We have it to where basically Doctor Strange is to uh, is to go to try and figure out what the heck both Thor and Loki are doing here. And so we end up having Thor having to explain everything. And so we end up having Doctor Strange who's like, well, like, 
if anything, like, why are you working with Loki? Like, Loki is considered, like, a great threat here. And Thor is like, well, yeah, but, like, he's a threat, but he's my threat. Like, he's, like, he's with me. And so we're going and trying to find our father. And, like, I need him for this information. I need to figure out where he is and where to locate him. And so we immediately have it to where... Doctor Strange is like, oh, okay, so immediately if I give you the answers that you seek, you'll basically be away from Midgard and I won't have to, like, I won't have you guys as either a problem or a threat or whatever. And Thor is like, exactly. And it's like, okay, well, boom. Uh, I'm going to figure out exactly where Odin is and get you there. So we push on to eventually have both... Uh, Odin and Loki go into Norway where it seems that Odin had been located. And so we end up having Thor and Loki to appear to see Odin to where we end up finding out that Odin had mastered the way of getting out of uh, Loki's spell and mentioning that uh, Loki's mother would have been proud about uh, him doing this spell so Odin is to mention that Ragnarok is upon both Loki and Thor. We have it to where Odin mentions that he has been uh, like trying to prevent this from happening from so long, but like now is now is the time. It's an unstoppable thing. Like there's too many. Uh, like there's. There's no way that Loke, that Odin can hold this back any further because he is he has grown too old. So we end up having it to where because Odin had lost his power, we immediately have it to where Odin has now gone to being close to death. And so we end up having it to where eventually Thor and Loki are to basically say their final words to their father. And we end up having Odin, who is to tell both Loki and Thor that Hela is to arrive, their sister. And so we we end up having it to where uh, Lo Odin is to die, and so Hela is to appear. We immediately have it to where it seems that, of course, the traditional thing to do is to have Odin or to have Thor throw his hammer but before that happens we end up having Hela who ends up talking to her brothers and basically mentioning like well dude like I'm gonna I'm gonna be the new I'm gonna be the new queen of all this like you better bow down to me right now and we end up having Thor and Loki use them and like well you haven't been in actual Asgard so like you don't deserve like you don't deserve to be given the crown it's like you haven't been in asgard to protect it so why should you be given anything kind of thing so but we immediately have hella who's just like well obviously i'm just stronger than the both of you and like and either like you bow to me now or i take you like i i kill you easily so we end up having thor who ends up tossing his hammer to just have Hela crush uh, the crush Mjolnir, kill Mjolnir, murder it. <laughs> to our Thor, it's like, huh? Like, how is this possible? And so we end up having Loki who ends up trying to do something, but he fails miserably as well. So we end up having really... Loki, who ends up saying, like, bring us back! And Thor is like, no! Because <laughs> immediately, like, when Hela and Loki is to come back, Thor is, or, or Hela is going to accompany with them because she as she is as much as Asgard as they are. And so we... We end up having it to where... We have, we have it to where uh, Hela is to like uh, accompany both 
Thor and Loki through this warp hole, and we end up having both Loki and Thor not actually make it to Asgard, but Hela does. We end up having instead, Loki is to push both uh, Thor and Loki into some other location. We end up having both Loki and Thor arriving in a world called Sakaar instead of, uh, instead of uh, Asgard. We end up having Hela who ends up making it to Asgard and immediately she is to be uh, she is to seemingly be stopped by two characters who are uh, Volstag and Fendril. We end up having Volstag and Fendril who are there to greet Hela and and to say like, okay, who are you? Like we thought that we were bringing up both Loki and Thor and we end up having Hela who's like, no, like if anything, like you brought me instead. And we end up, we end up having immediately Volstag and Vendril are trying to make an offense uh, or a defense and immediately they end up getting stabbed and killed. <laughs> so we have it to where uh, we end up having it to where Hela is to is to go on and to have it to where she is to see Scourge, who is also there. And we end up having Hela, who's like, well, it looks like you have good survival instincts. Like, how about you come along with me? So we end up having Hela, who is to arrive in Asgard and greet everyone there, to where we have Hogan, who seems to have a bunch of Asgardians with him. And so we immediately have it to where Hela is to mention who she is and what she wants to do, and that she's like, hey, like, uh, m greet your new queen, like, I'm going to rule over you, and it's all going to be good times and noodle salad and whatever. And we end up having Hogan who's like, I don't know who you are, but <laughs> I don't care. And Hela's like, dude, did you not just listen to a word I just said? <laughs> like, like, I thought you would be happy that I arrived. And so... We immediately have it to where there are Asgardians that start to attack Hela, and one by one, Hela is just easily taking every single one of these Asgardians out. To where we end up having Hogan, who of course ends up getting killed along with them. We eventually have Hogan, who ends up uh, eventually popping back up, to eventually have Hela, who is asking like, Oh, did you have a change of heart? And Hogan's like, No, like, I'm gonna, like, try again to, like, come after you and so we end, we end up just having Hela who ends up just killing Hogan twice just to make a like yeah all these guys are just dead so we so we push on so we have Thor like I think I'm kind of like I, I think we'll eventually get to the Hela part where eventually she goes on to eventually go and uh and tell scourge about like the real true uh castle or the real true asgardian castle and all the the secrets that unlock in there we'll get to that in a little bit later but so we go on and we end up having thor who is sadly at scar or sakar and so we end up having thor who's just rumbling rummaging through this garbage to eventually have seemingly these uh, junk collectors who are to basically ask Thor, it's like, well, are you a fighter or are you meat? And we have it to where Thor is just defying these junk collectors. And so they're like, oh, okay, well, you're meat. We immediately have Valkyrie and her ship arrive to basically just tell uh, these people that, well, this one, he's mine. Because we end up having them netting up Thor already. Uh, and electrocuting him with some kind of net of sorts. So we end up having these junk collectors who are like, oh, great, much more meat. Because <laughs> we end up having Valkyrie, who is uh, to be introduced 
like so drunk that she ends up like trying to get out of her ship. She ends up falling off to the side, which I thought was hilarious. I'm like, this is the best way to introduce this character as a comedic approach. You just like, oh, is she is she dead? <laughs> like, did they did they just kill her off? But we end up having Valkyrie who ends up trying to like dig out of this junk to collect Thor, and we immediately have these junk collectors who are like. Well, no, like, he's kind of, he's mine, and Valkyrie's like, no, he's mine now. And so, we have it to where Valkyrie ends up taking her ship and just gunning all of these junk collectors down to where we end up having Valkyrie who ends up collecting Thor. We end up having, eventually, Thor placed on his neck some uh, deterrent to where it's kind of like a shock collar. So... We end up having Thor mention that he's the Lord of Thunder and that, like, uh, he's an Asgardian and all this kind of stuff to Valkyrie, uh, telling her that he desperately needs to go back to Asgard, and Valkyrie does not give a crap. Valkyrie does not care. He's like, oh, well, like, yeah, like, that's all good and great, your highness. Like, yeah, sure. Like, say whatever you're going to say. And so... We end up having it to where we have uh, Valkyrie who ends up taking Thor and plopping him into this chair to be sent to the Grandmaster. So we end up having this uh, this scene where uh, where Thor is to be ushered in to see this whole Grandmaster scenery, and the entire time we're hearing we're hearing Willy Wonka music and. We end up having uh, Thor eventually, like, going in, like, what's what's going on? We end up having this explained that the uh, that this place is a car and that uh, we have a grandmaster here who is to put people through the contest of champions and all about this place and how it seems to be a very wonderful place. And then eventually the further and further that eventually we get to talking about this place and talking about how wonderful it is and whatever eventually we just end up seeing uh eventually the uh the voiceover person telling them like you will see the grandmaster now and we end up having like thor who ends up just like starting to see like all these flashing lights and all these like like he's gonna have it like a seizure soon he's like ah! <laughs> and then eventually the ride just stops and so we end up having the grandmaster who's like like is this a man or a woman <laughs> like <laughs> So, we end up having the Grandmaster who is, who is asked, uh, like, who is asked, like, well, what exactly is this? Is, is it a champion or, like, what is this? And so, we end up having the Valkyrie to mention how, like, uh, like, who this is and that he's a champion. And, like, well, the Grandmaster is to know that it seems that, uh... Valkyrie tends to bring them the best. We end up having uh, Topak, who is to kind of tall, uh, kind of call uh, Valkyrie a, a bitch, and like Grandmaster's like, no, that's that's not the that's not the word. <laughs> that's not even uh, like a like a booze hag or something. And like and he's like, no, like I was gonna say the best. It's like so. We end up having the Grandmaster who starts to look Thor over. And he's like, and who are you? And we end up having uh, Thor mention that he's the god of thunder as he like as he like thrusts up his like his uh, his shackles, and then eventually he ends up plopping them back onto the chair. And we end up seeing that uh, that Thor has some uh, lightning coming out of his fingertips, and we end up having uh, Goldblum mentioning how like. Oh yeah, you have sparklers coming out of your hands. Like wow, like <laughs> real true threat here, everybody. Sparklers, <laughs> yeah. So we eventually have Thor, who is to be thrusted next to a guy who I guess had tried to escape from them, and so we end up having the Grandmaster, who is to get the melt, uh, who is to have Topak get the melting stick out. So we end up having Grandmaster, who ends up touching 
uh, the guy sitting next to Thor, and this guy ends up starting to melt away, and we end up having Thor is like, oh my god! <laughs> As this guy is melting away, and so we end up having uh, the Grandmaster's like, oh, he got a little bit on me. Uh, like, uh, uh, he got some of himself on me. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> so we are to go on and to basically showcase like what ends up happening to people that end up trying to escape or get on the bad side of Grandmaster. So we are to push on and have Thor to go into... Uh, this holding cell where eventually he is to find Meek and uh, and Korg. We end up having Thor who ends up going along and basically saying that he's going to escape from here and he's going to beat everybody. And we end up having Korg who's like, oh, that's like Dave. Like, oh, hi, new Dave. <laughs> so we are to eventually at some point have... Thor eventually bump into Loki in this establishment and eventually we end up having Thor talk to Loki about what he had done. And like that scene is really just kind of fascinating where we end up having Loki who is kind of asking Thor like, well, like, what are you going to do? And we end up having Thor going like, like, what do you expect me to do? Like, what, like... And we end up having it to where Loki's like, well, that's not the, that's not the, like, Thor that I used to know. And, like, Loki's just, or, or Thor is really just like, dude, like, everything has been torn away from me. Like, I've lost, like, I'm probably going to lose almost everything now. Like, father is dead and, like, and everything is just, like, like, I'm a million miles away from a place where I've uh, been sworn to protect, like, and there's seemingly no way to get out of where he is now. So we end up having Hela going to Asgard and doing some redecoration. We end up having Hela to showcase Scourge what, uh, what is to actually have been shown onto this one part of this castle because it seems that that had been redecorated to show all kinds of peace treaties and, and all kinds of silly stuff where we end up having Hela breaking this whole uh, ceiling part to show how much war and desecration that they used to do. So we end up having Hela who is to go through the trophy room to showcase how there's some things that are fake and are like not all that great uh, with the exclusion of po quite possibly the Tesseract. So we end up having Hela, who is to go and grab the Eternal Flame, to go and uh, go and take a axe and start bashing through the the trophy room, to eventually fall for thirty minutes <laughs> down some hole. She's been falling for thirty minutes uh, to get to her to get to her disciples. We end up having Hela, who is to revive her Berserkers, which is her, like, zombie Asgardians, and her giant wolf-like character, who is called Fendril, to have these characters be Hela's bodyguards, but also to fight any threat that ends up coming their way. So, we... We end up eventually having... Thor, who is now having to be close to uh, going on to fight, uh, fight whoever the Grandmaster's champion is. And so we end up having Korg, who is to tell Thor to choose his weapon wisely. And so we end up having Thor, who mentions about his, his, uh, his hammer and how, like, and how great it was. And we end up having like Korg just kind of mentioning it's like, well, like this is a, like a metaphorical hammer. <laughs> like, so we end up having like Thor, like consistently explaining this like hammer. And we end up having Korg who's just like, like, yeah, that like, there was a lot of like innuendos and bizarre things that like Korg got out of that. And it was just like, God, like, okay, that just seems very weird. So 
We end up having Thor just having to forcibly choose some kind of weapons to use. And while he's doing that, we end up having, of course, Thor bump into the Valkyrie yet again. And so we end up having Thor who is trying to talk uh, Valkyrie into helping him yet again. We also end up having Thor who is to finally realize that he is to notice a Valkyrie tattoo. And he's like, oh, like... Hey, yeah, like, I know that you used to, like, fight alongside my father, and, like, you, you ladies were awesome. Like, sadly enough, I thought all of you had been killed off, but I guess not. Like, oh, well, like, you should definitely help me then, because you used to be a Valkyrie. And Valkyrie is like, no, I have no interest in helping you, your majesty. Like, no, like, like, I have no inkling of helping you besides collecting money and and so on and so forth so we end up having of course thor who is to go on and uh, right before he ends up going on to fight whoever the grandmaster has for him we end up having thor who has to forcibly get a haircut by stan lee <laughs> We end up having this very hilarious moment where Thor is like demanding to Stanley, please don't cut my hair, sir. <laughs> please don't cut my hair. And so we end up having Thor who ends up getting his hair butchered. You can just see like lightning lines and all kinds of things like within his hair. Like I guess it kind of makes for a very cool imagery when he is to like eventually get some lightning and it kind of like goes into the hair pattern or whatever. But it just looks hilarious. So... We go on to eventually have Thor, who is now forced to have to fight whoever this champion is. And so, we end up having it to where Thor is to eventually bump into Loki and talk things out and whatever. And just basically say, like, well, hey, like, uh, if anything, maybe you can talk to the Grandmaster to, like, letting me go. Because, like, you're my brother. And eventually we end up having, like, the Grandmaster talking to Loki. It's like, oh, he's your brother? He's like, well, like, uh, I'm his adopted brother. It's like, well, <laughs> like, it's kind of funny eventually when, like, uh, when Goldblum, like, talks to Loki about his brother. And like, yeah, I don't know what, uh, what's up with you and your brother. <laughs> adopted, complicated, whatever it is. <laughs> so... We go on and now we have Loki who is watching over uh, Thor who is going to quite possibly die from this whole contest of champions. So we end up having Thor who is just kind of waiting it out. Uh, and we end up having, of course, uh, Goldblum who is doing the introduction of him. And like, hey, watch out everybody, he has sparklers. <laughs> so... We end up having, of course, the other contestant who comes out, and of course, this is Thor. And we end up having, uh, or who, of course, is uh, Hulk. Why am I saying Thor twice? We end up having Hulk, who is, it was throttling out onto the stage, and we end up having Thor, who's like, yes. <laughs> it's like, hey, like, uh, he's a friend from work. Like, yeah, like. Like, hey, like, I know him. And so we end up having Thor, who is talking to Hulk. And so we end up having, uh, like, Thor just kind of, like, mentioning uh, some things here and there to Hulk. And he's like, yeah, like, hey, like, uh, like, yeah, we're such good friends. Where have you been, buddy? And, like, and he, and we end up having Thor, who ends up, like, saying Banner a lot instead of Hulk. And we end up having Hulk who's like, there is no banner, there's only Hulk. And so we end up having Hulk who ends up just starting to uh, swing at Thor. And Thor is like, well, hey, like, I just went and just started telling him we were buddies. It's like, like, what are you doing? Like, like, why are you, like, attacking me? And so... We end up having Hulk who is to basically not be the person that Thor knows him to be. And so eventually we end up having Thor just saying like, oh, F it, like screw it. Like, I'm just going to go and just attack Hulk because we end up having at some point where 
uh, Thor does the whole, like, sun's getting really low. <laughs> it's like... And so we end up having Hulk falling for the th- the sun is really low gag. And we end up having Thor who's like, yeah, just smiling. is like, the sun's really low there, buddy. And we end up having Hulk who ends up, like, taking... Uh, Thor's legs and just slinging him around. And Loki's like, yeah, that's how it feels. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so we end up having it to where eventually uh, we are to think that Hulk is, or Hulk is going to beat Thor at this point. But eventually Thor eventually goes into lightning mode and starts to counteract what Hulk is trying to do. And so, we end up having Thor who's just like, dude, I, I just don't care anymore. And so we end up having Thor who is to basically tell Hulk that he's like, well, like, uh, better, I'll get you out. <laughs> like, I'm going to beat him out of you. And so we just end up having, like, Thor who is just really just beating the living crap out of Hulk. And so we eventually have it to where the Grandmaster is to electrify Thor, which is to take him out, to where we end up having Hulk, who is to deliver a blow to Thor to call this contest done. And so we end up having both Thor and Hulk, who are to be in this, uh, like, suite or some kind of uh, room of sorts. And so... We end up having both Hulk and Thor in the same room together. And so we are to uh, basically have Thor asking Hulk, it's like, well, hey, like, are we squared up now? Like, are we good? And so Hulk is like, yeah, like, and so we end up having Thor kind of asking, like, uh, like, why Hulk has been here for so long and uh and how he had gotten here and we end up having hulk mentioned about the quinjet where the quinjet of course was from a- the ending of age of ultron to where he ended up landing here on a quinjet so we end up having thor who's like oh great like now i can figure out how i can how i can get out of here and like how i can be able to uh get on to get out of here to be able to get back to Asgard. We end up having Hulk who is to basically mention that, or we end up having Thor who's basically mentioned Hulk that he, he is to need his, uh, need his help. And that eventually uh, Thor can help Hulk get back to Earth, and and Hulk is like, I don't want to go back to Earth. Like, no, like, everyone hates me there. And so, we eventually have it to where Thor is trying to reason to Hulk, and Hulk wants nothing to do with it, to where eventually Thor just goes, you know what, like, everybody on Earth does hate you. <laughs> and, like, and like, wah, wah, wah. And so, we eventually go on to eventually have Valkyrie come on in to eventually uh, talk to Hulk. But eventually that, and and then that leads to Thor actually talking to uh, Valkyrie. So we have Thor who is trying one last time to reason to Valkyrie about needing her help and that she needs, she needs to help him to go to uh, Asgard because Hela is there. We we end up, of course, having at some point Loki, who is to eventually touch Valkyrie and see the imagery of Valkyrie fighting Hela at some point. So that's that's kind of interesting, but. We have Valkyrie that is very disinterested in helping Thor to the point of her just going and chugging some big huge jug of of alcohol to not really much hear Thor out that whatever uh, whatever she has the time to drink this beer for is whatever Thor has the time to tell her the story of what's going on. 
Valkyrie is very disinterested, but Thor is to tell her, it's like, well, you should come with me and you should help me because that's what heroes do. So we have it to where Thor ends up tossing a ball into some glass and it just jumps back and just hits Thor right in the head. So, Valkyrie doesn't want to help Thor, but Thor is to eventually, is to just steal something from Valkyrie that is to actually let uh, Thor's uh, device detach from him. And so, we have Thor who is to go on to break through this glass and to try to make it to the Gwyn the Quinjet. We have Hulk who ends who notices that Thor is leaving, and so Hulk tries to follow him to the Quinjet, to where we are to have Thor try to get into the Quinjet. He's trying to use some passcodes that he thinks Tony would know to put in there. And so we end up having Thor who ends up having to forcefully say point break. And then, of course, that is the access code. And, like, Thor's like, God dang it, Stark. So, we have Hulk who makes it to the Quinjet to basically start destroying the Quinjet to, I think, one, stop Thor from escaping, but also just because he's Thor and he doesn't care. So, we end up having Thor watching Hulk continue to damage this Quinjet and we end up having Thor trying to stop him from doing it. We end up ha we end up having Hulk go and hit some button that ends up triggering the Black Widow talking to him on the Quinjet. So we end we we have here Thor watching Hulk transition back into Banner. Because of Black Widow. So. We have Thor. Who is to seemingly wake. Banner. To have Banner. Not been Banner for such a long time. It's really hard to process. A lot of things are to. Eventually. Uh, have Banner being hesitant. On even wanting to leave this place or to go on with Thor to do anything. There is also a moment where Thor is to be stuck in that room with Hulk. And so we have Thor who ends up talking to Heimdall and, and having Heimdall showcase what is actually going on in Asgard. We have Heimdall who is trying to get a lot of Asgardians that are rebelli rebelling against Hela to try to collect them all and to try to save uh, the Asgardians from Berserkers or from uh, any number of threats. So Heimdall is trying to take all of these Asgardians to a secret for them to just hide it out. To where eventually we end up having Hela collect whoever is left in Asgard to consistently ask people where is all of the survivors hiding. To where we end up ha we we have Scourge who ends up taking a woman and taking a almost axe to her head and someone ends up spilling the beans of where people are. So. We end up having Hela, who ends up going and uh, ends up taking uh, the door of which that these people are located down to have these Asgardians uh, go on to eventually have to run for the hills or somewhere that where they can go. We have Heimdall, who ends up running to the Rainbow Bridge to get to... Uh, the Bifrost thing to try and get out of here to some other world. 
because we end up having Hela who is looking for Heimdall's sword because it it was no longer in the Bifrost location to where they can uh, switch from place to place to place at the end of this Rainbow Road. So we are to we are to go on to have Bruce who is now wearing Tony Stark's clothes and they are in uh they're in Sakaar together and so Thor is to talk to Bruce about trying to go with him to Asgard and Bruce is like dude I don't I don't want to go and fight your sister <laughs> like that seems like a family thing like I don't want to fight any more wars like I don't want to like, like no I don't want to I don't want to do any I don't want to go to Asgard like no I don't want to do any of that so we have Loki who is to go with Valkyrie to seek Grandmaster because the Grandmaster wants Thor and Hulk collected. So we have Valkyrie who says, well, like, I can get them. And, and Loki is like, well, I can get them. And they keep notching down what amount of time that they can be able to retrieve them in. And so we have it. To our grandmaster is like, well, at first I was thinking about a public execution, but now I just want to like see the whole who gets him first kind of thing. Let's let's push that out. So we have Loki and Valkyrie who ends up who fight together, and then Loki ends up touching Valkyrie to get some of her memories about the whole fight. Valkyrie fighting out against Hela and in losing. So we have it. We have Valkyrie who ends up taking down Loki, chaining him up and putting Loki in her room, chained up. So we have Banner and Thor who are to go through the town and we have the Zakarian people celebrating Hulk still, I guess, as their champion. So we end up have, we have a bunch of people who are celebrating Hulk. They have all kinds of statues and whatever made of them. So we have Valkyrie who ends up bumping back into Thor and Banner. And so we have Valkyrie who takes Thor, Banner to her room to just mention like, well, hey, like, you know what, I think this should be the right thing to do with just going back to Asgard and finding, fighting out Hela and get this over with. Like, we need to go back to Asgard because I think Valkyrie is just realizing that, like, she needs to do the right thing. So, we... We have we have uh, blah, 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 blah. we have Valkyrie who is to tell Thor and Loki to go and get a specific ship. So we have Thor and Loki who are going into this elevator, and Thor is to basically say how at some point, or Thor is to mention how. Loki at some point to him was going to be a person that was going to fight at Thor's side at some point and that he always hoped that that would always happen. And so we end up having this tender moment between Loki and Thor which I like this part of this movie where we kind of see that Loki could be a good guy and Thor sees that. So we have... Thor, who is to make it to this ship that they're supposed to go on to, and Loki is to, again, betray Thor, to release the alarm, and so Thor picked up on that, and so Thor ended up giving Loki this 
uh, the neck inhibitor onto his back to electrocute Loki and to take him down. And, and so Thor goes onto the ship and we have Valkyrie who is to follow behind him. And so we have Valkyrie who ends up uh, shooting out Banner onto Thor's ship. And, and we have Valkyrie who is to try to take down some of the other ships with uh, two, two, uh, Tupac on it, or Topak. Uh, then we have Valkyrie's ship who ends up getting destroyed, but Valkyrie ends up flying onto the windshield of the Thor ship. We have Thor and Valkyrie who get out of this ship to go and take down all the other attacking ships because uh, the Grandmaster ship that they are on doesn't have a defense mechanism. We have Banner who is forced to drive this ship and he's like, how am I supposed to drive an alien ship? And Thor's like, well, use one of your PhDs. And Banner's like, well, like none of these PhDs that I have are for flying alien spacecraft. Like, come on. So we have Banner who just keeps hitting every single button to hope that there is some kind of weapon that he can use. One of the weapons were to fire off some kind of fireworks behind him, which was to distract one of the enemy ships to smack into something to destroy one of the ships. And we have, we have Banner who's like, yeah! So we eventually have Thor, Banner... Valkyrie retreating back into the Grandmaster ship to eventually go through the uh, the Devil's Anus or whatever it's called. So they get through that to end up going back to uh, Asgard. So we had also to help Thor, Banner, and everybody else uh, try to get out of uh, Sakaar, we had uh, Valkyrie uh, trying to do a rebellion with uh, Korg and Meek, throwing them weapons, telling them, hey, like, go out there and uh, throw a rebellion. So we have Grandmaster's like, oh, rebellion started out. <laughs> so... We have Korg, who is to bring a lot of his people to go on some ship, and they see Loki lying onto the ground. They help him uh, turn off his shock collar-like thing and to say, hey, like, uh, we're going on the ship. You want to go? You want to go? So we have Loki, who is like, well, it looks like you guys need some kind of leadership. Like, if anything, I can, I can help you with that. So... We, I'm going to, I'm going to pause here for a second. I want to reset a little bit. Okay. So. We have Banner. Uh, Banner, Thor, and Valkyrie make it to Asgard. Thor is to sit at the crown of Odin's chair. While Banner and Valkyrie are to help Heimdall with the whole uh, Berserker situation, to where eventually we have Loki arrive to also help out with the Berserker situation to get all the defenseless people onto the ship. So, we have Loki who is to fight out Hela, and Hela is just completely overpowering him, and eventually... Hela is to burn half of Thor's eye. So she Hela's to mention like, oh, you really look like our father. So we have Hela who ends up pushing Thor onto some balcony, and Hela is to of course ask uh Thor, what were you the god of again? 
Thor is to all of a sudden start to hallucinate bizarrely and is channeling his father to ask Odin, well, like, Hela is too strong. There's no way for me to take her down. Like, I don't have my hammer, and that's the reason why I'm losing. And we have Odin who's like, dude, are you serious? Like, are you the god of hammers? Like, what are you the god of? And Thor is like, well, god of thunder. It's like, well... Bring the thunder. Bring the lightning, mother... Uh, like, bring some ACDC down in here. Come on. Like, get to it. Like, we have Thor who's mentioning to Odin, like, well, yeah, but... I gotta figure out how to take down Hela and save Asgard. And Odin's like, dude, no. No, buddy. Like, you know what? Asgard, like, doesn't need to be saved. Asgard is not a place, it's a people. So, like, do whatever you need to do with Asgard to just get this Hela out of the way. Like, if that means complete annihilation of Asgard, then... Then, great. Because Asgard is just a people. Get them the heck out of here and do whatever with Asgard. So... We have, we have Thor who is to put the best lightning bolt that he can put onto Hela just to have Thor uh, go back to defend his Asgardian people and to take down a lot of these berserkers. So we have Loki who is now here and asking, hey, like, what's the game plan? We have Loki who's like, well, Serta and the Eternal Flame, like, go, Loki. Like, this is my plan because, like, yeah, like, we can't stop Hela. So, like, we have to find something that will stop Hela. And so Loki's like, bold move, brother. It's like, I never would have came up with it. So we have Loki scrambling to go to the trophy room where he's taking a second looking at the Tesseract. But we end up having Loki, who is to take uh, Serta and put him in, into the Eternal Flame. So, we have Thor, who's trying to do a decent uh, kind of battle with Hela. Which, of course, there's not much to try and get past uh, to take down Hela. So, we have Hela who's like, dude, like... I have got Asgard down. Like, I got it on lockdown, buddy. What do you got, Thor? You got nothing. So Thor is like, well, like, yeah, I don't got nothing, but there's someone else that does have something. So we have, uh, we have Serta who ends up crashing through the castle of Asgard, and we have Hela who's shaking in her boots because she's like, oh my god, Serta! It's like, yeah, like, eh. like we had, we like both of these, both of Serta and Hela are going to cancel one another out. And if that means completely annihilating as, as Asgard to, and performing Ragnarok to take out Hela, then that's just what we'll do. So we end up, ha we have everyone get onto the ship. Uh, I apologize if I, like, I think there's some transitional words that I repeat a lot, and that's obvious through this recording. So, I apologize for that. I don't know, I just go into this, like, trying to figure out a transitional word, and I end up saying things repetitively over and over. I apologize. So, I think the word, the we end up, just happens a lot. Uh, so, I guess it's better than eventually... Or, or ultimately, I don't know. But, so, we have Hela, Serta fighting it out. Hulk gets in there, almost fights Serta, and Thor's like, No, Hulk! Do not smash for once! So, Hulk grabs both Thor, Valkyrie, uh, brings them back onto the ship, and so... They end up just 
uh, flying away off of this ship to see the destruction of Asgard. Korg is like, well, maybe there's going to be some foundation left to where we can rebuild. And then Asgard completely gets annihilated, and Korg is like, well, maybe not. <laughs> so we have really Thor mentioning to people, it's like, well, hey, Asgard is not a place, it's a people. We need to really understand that. So we have immediately where Odin had mentioned that Asgard could be in Norway because it seemed that Odin had liked Norway. So we have Loki who is to talk to Thor about like, well, where do you think that we're heading? And do you think people would understand or be fine with me going along with them and thor is like well like if anything like i think they'll be fine with it just like like let's just go wherever we need to so thor asks uh korg or meek where do you think we should go and nobody knows so thor is like well i guess we'll just go right back to earth so we have the movie end, but there's an end credit scene to have Thanos' ship arrive to greet uh, Thor and the Asgardians. And we're just be like, whoa, like, well, is Thor going to make it out of this? Is Loki going to make it out of this? Is everyone going to make it out of this? Is all the Asgardians going to be slayed? Who knows? We'll find out when eventually we review Avengers Endgame. So with that said, I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.